Happy Tuesday, everybody. It's August the 25th, and these are some of the headlines on BizarreBest.com. 12th Fort Hood soldier found dead, sexually abused. What the hell is going on at Fort Hood? Pup preserved in permafrost ate the last woolly rhino on earth. Sturgis rally, COVID infections move fast and far after the attendees head home. And mystery radio signal in space we've been talking about uh, that's on a cycle, just woke up and on time. All these headlines and more at BizarreBiz.com. BizarreBiz.com. Real news. No bullshit. Here's what we know about the 12 soldiers either missing, slain, or killed in incidents since January 2020 at Fort Hood. Fort Hood appears to be on the cusp of yet another tragedy as authorities search for the latest Army soldier to go missing from the base. Um, a Texas military installation on which Army psychiatrist Major Nidal Hassan killed 13 people and injured 32 others in 2009 in a mass shooting has seen more than its share of bloodshed in 2014. Five years after Hassan's killing rampage, uh, Iraq war veteran and Army veteran SPC Ivan Lopez opened fire on the base, killing three soldiers and injuring 16. Um, more recently, a spate of missing and slain soldiers has plagued the base, where multiple investigations into the command climate and culture have been launched following allegations of rampant sexual harassment and abuse. Since the beginning of the year, there have been 12 Fort Hood soldiers who have vanished, died, or in one case turned up dead after going missing last year. Two more who had been separated from the army at the base within the previous six months were also slain. Um, one of those two cases, a person charged with murder, was an active duty soldier based at Fort Hood. Uh, he then killed himself if they're, if they're talking about the one that I'm talking about, he killed himself and dude's girlfriend actually beheaded the chick. Anyway, the numbers are high here. Uh, they are the highest in most cases for sexual assault, harassment, murders for our entire formation of the U.S. Army. Uh, Army Secretary Ryan McCarthy said during a visit to Fort Hood earlier this month. Here's what we know about each of the soldiers. Sergeant Elder Fernandez, 23, was last seen by fellow soldiers a week ago on August 17th at a civilian home in Killeen, Texas. Army officials confirmed on Saturday that the sergeant had been a, the alleged victim of sexual abuse. He did not report to work the following day as scheduled. Fort Hood officials said in a news release, additionally, his only known vehicle was located on the base at his unit's parking lot. Fernandez, a native of the Republic of Cabo Verde, is a chemical, biological, radiological, and nuclear specialist assigned to the headquarters and headquarters company 50, 553rd Combat Sustained Support Battalion. Foul play is not suspected in his disappearance. What? But how do they know he was sexually abused? Did I read earlier today that they actually found his body? I can't confirm that at this moment. Information gathered from a few soldiers indicates that Fernandez left on his own accord. We resolve every case based on its unique circumstances at this time. There's no connection between the disappearance of this dude and any other ongoing cases at Fort Hood. But I'm pretty sure they found his body today or the last couple of days. Lieutenant Colonel Chris, uh, a spokesman for the 1st Cavalry Division, uh, said that Fernandez had reported improper sexual contact to his superiors. We can confirm that there is an open investigation of abusive sexual contact involving Sergeant Fernandez. He said, the unit sexual assault response coordinator has been working closely with Fernandez, ensuring he was aware of all his reporting, care, and victim advocacy options. Fernandez has also been transferred to ensure he received the proper care and ensure there were no further opportunities for reprisals. So dude, who are these people that are just going around raping everybody? Um, 
As we go down, within hours of Sergeant Fernandez's disappearance, soldiers from his unit on Fort Hood initiated a thorough search for him, both on and off post, which will continue until he's located. All division motor pulls, parking lots, barracks, everything. SPC Cole Jacob Atten, 22, of Science Hill, Kentucky, was killed August 12th as he helped at the scene of a minor crash on U.S. Route 190 and Interstate 14 in Killeen. Atten was standing in the roadway directing traffic that involves vehicles when he was struck by a driver who didn't see him and didn't have enough time to avoid him. No charges have been filed. Okay, SPC Francisco Gilberto Hernandez Vargas drowned August 2nd in a boating ass accident at Stillhouse Hollow Lake a U.S. Army Corps of Engineers reservoir located 15 miles from Fort Hood. Um, PVT, I guess Private Mayor Morta of Pensacola, Florida, was found dead July 17th on Stillhouse Hollow Lake. Authorities said a preliminary autopsy indicated his death, like that of Hernandez Vargas, appeared to be from drowning. His body was found at the base of the dam, according to a news release. SPC Vanessa Gillen, oh, here we go, whose disappearance and death made national headlines. Uh, I don't need to read this, uh, but ba because I can tell you. Um, basically, one of her, the people in her unit, um, basically killed her. And or something, maybe I should read it to you, I guess. Gillen, whose disappearance and death made from national headlines and prompted multiple investigations of his sexual harassment on Fort Hood, vanished April 22nd. Authorities initially said uh, that she had been, last been seen in a parking lot of the Regiment Engineer Squadron headquarters. Her car keys, barracks room key ID, ID cards were later found in an armory room where she was working earlier in the day. She was last seen wearing a black t-shirt and purple finesse fitness type pants. Fort Hood officials said that in a news conference, investigators had been unable to corroborate claims um, and a probe into the implementation of the basis sexual harassment assault prevention program is ongoing. Basically, I don't... This dude in her barracks or something, maybe not in her exact barracks, killed her. And then this, his name was Robinson. And then his civilian girlfriend is charged with conspiracy to tamper with evidence because she then cut Robinson's body into pieces with machete and an ax and burned her remains and buried them. They both did. Then he blew his head off and then she's left to deal with all of it. The girlfriend. Private 2 Gregory Weldell Morals, Elder Fernandez, was reported missing nearly one year to the day after August 20th, 2019. Um, he was days away from being discharged from the Army, and his skeletal remains were found June 19th, days before Gillen's body was found, in a field about four miles from the base. His death is being investigated as a homicide, and his mother, Kim Weddell, said investigators believe he was shot in the face. Weldell has been a Weldell has been critical of army officials who declared Morales a deserter after he vanished, but it wasn't until Gillen's disappearance and subsequent reward for information on her whereabouts that Fort Hood offered identical reward on his disappearance after his mom bitched a fit, which I don't blame her. That's crazy, dude. PFC Brandon Scott Rosecrans um, was found slain on May 18th on the side of a road in Harker Heights, Texas. He had been shot four times. Two people were arrested earlier this month and charged for his murder. Dude. These two people had befriended my son, says the mother, and the week before the homicide had been pretty much leeching off my son, so they killed him. You can't trust nobody, dude. Michael Stephen Wardrobe, he was 22, shot and killed March 23rd at a residence in Killeen. Killeen's always coming up, dude. It, it's a pretty rough place, I hear. I don't live there, just saying. I've heard that. <laughs> Those of you who live there, um, 
SPC Jovio Jamel Roy, 22, has been charged with his murder in this case. The two men were in a fight that became physical. SPC Freddie ben Beninjo De La Cruz Jr. of Georgia was one of three people killed in a triple homicide March 14th in Killeen. Dude! Police have identified two other victims as Asia and Shaquan. Klein, who was Del Cruz's girlfriend, was pregnant when she was killed. Asia Klein uh, was killed with him. Just stay the hell out of Killeen. That's what you need to do, dude. Wow. SPC Christopher Wayne Sawyer of Washington was found dead March 5th at his home on the base. Army CID officials said foul play was not suspected in Sawyer's death, but that an investigation was being conducted. I don't believe that for a minute. After what I'm reading here, SPC Shelby Tyler Jones was found suffering from a gunshot wound shortly after 3 a.m. at a convenience store in Killeen. Stay out of Killeen. <laughs> Dude. Private Eric Christopher Hogan and PFC Anthony Neville Peak Jr. Hogan 19, Peak 21, died February 1st from injuries they suffered in a private car crash on Highway 195. Dude, it's bad luck. They need to shut that place down. Okay, so that's pretty much the end of that, but you get the point. There's a lot going on. Uh, so hopefully they don't, the latest dude shows up and he's not dead, but I'm I want to say I read today that they found his body, but I could be wrong, okay? Uh, anyway, I will link all this at BizarreBiz.com. Keep track, y'all. We're on number 12 for Fort Hood this year. A pup preserved in permafrost ate one of the last woolly rhinos on Earth. Dude, he must have been super hungry because they're pretty hairy. The mummy had an undigested piece of woolly rhino in its stomach. It had some sharp teeth, too, according to the picture I'm looking at. Just before a tiny pup died during the last ice age, it ate a piece of meat from one of the Earth's last woolly rhinos. Researchers made this discovery while doing a necropsy, an animal autopsy, on the mummified remains of the ice age puppy. After finding an undigested slab of skin with yellow fur in the puppy's stomach, researchers initially thought the puppy had chewed off a hunk of cave lion meat for its last meal. But DNA analysis of the slab revealed that it wasn't a cave lion, but a woolly rhino, which went extinct 14,000 years ago, right about the time that this pup had its last meal. Puppers. Puppers. And who gave the puppers its last meal? Man, it's got some sharp teeth too, dude. That means that this puppy ate one of the last woolly rhinos ever to exist. He's so little, I doubt, I, I bet you his mother gave it to him. Said Ed, Edana Lord, a doctoral student at the Center for Paleogenetics in Sweden, a joint venture between Stockholm University and Swedish Museum of Natural History. The mummified puppy was discovered in Tumat, a rural locality in northeastern Siberia, in 2011, an analysis revealed that the puppy was likely between three and nine months old when it died, but it's unclear whether the pup was a dog or a wolf, Lord noted. A mystery that also surrounds an 18,000-year-old puppy found in Siberia in 2018. I think it falls around the critical point for the dog-wolf domestication, she told Life Science, adding that a research team in Copenhagen is trying to decipher whether the two-map pup was domesticated or not. He's tiny, y'all. Radiocarbon dating revealed that the two-map puppy lived about 14,000 years ago. Researchers also radiocarbon dated the woolly rhino slab to rule out the possibility that the rhino hadn't died earlier and been preserved in Siberia's permafrost, only to be discovered by the puppy at a later date. It's possible that this puppy may have been one of a scavenging pack and that the wolves either took down the rhino or were looking for food and came across a rhino carcass. If the puppy was domesticated, it's possible that it was living with humans who may have shared the rhino meal with the pup. 
Soon after the puppy ate the woolly rhino, it died. Although it's anyone's guess as to how, maybe it was too young to digest that business. Maybe it, you know what I mean? Could have just died from overeating, dude. Um, the researchers were able to rule out one scenario, though. It doesn't look like it's been squashed before it was preserved as a mummy in the cold permafrost. Despite this rhino dinner, predators probably didn't cause the extinction of the woolly rhino. According to Lord's new research, instead the culprit was the rapidly warming climate <clears throat> Excuse me. at the end of the last ice age she and her colleagues found when the team sequenced a woolly rhinoceros' nuclear genome and 14 mi mitochondrial genomes, which is DNA passed down the maternal line, including the specimen found in the puppy's belly, they found that the woolly rhino population was stable and diverse up until a few thousand years before the herbivores went extinct. The genetic diversity indicates that there wasn't inbreeding, a problem that plagued the dwarf woolly mammoths on Wrangell Island off the northern coast of Russia about 4,000 years ago. Because of the genetic diversity, as well as the association of the extinction with Boeing Alarod interstadial, a very abrupt warming period about 14,700 years ago, we suggest that the woolly rhinoceros went extinct due to climate change. Um, moreover, the rhinos were accustomed to foraging in the dry grasslands, but the warming climate during that period changed their environment to snowy. So maybe it just got like too cold too quick and that's what happened. Who knows? It's all a hypothesis, dude. I don't think anyone really knows. Anyway, I will link it so you can see pictures of the puppy's teeth. They're pretty sharp at bizarrebus.com. Hey, y'all. I just wanted to take a moment and show you the new Bizarrebus mask I got. It's freaking awesome. Um, it's a polyester shell on the outside, 100% cotton on the inside, so nice and soft. Um, made in the USA. That was important. We had to make that happen and goes on super easy, doesn't pull your ears, and I'm doing this with glasses on, so you can see. Doesn't pull your ears, full coverage, good stuff. Anyway, uh, these are, you can get them in black, gray, white, red, and they're $12.99. It's got our logo on the front. If you feel like you'd like to support us, this is one good way to do it. Um, you can go to bizarrebest.com, and on the right top of the page, you'll see the mask. Um, and we would so appreciate your support. At the same store, you can get a t-shirt if you want. Anyway, thanks so much. I appreciate you guys. Dude, it's Bizarre Best Headlines, 100% unfiltered. Well, that Sturgis rally did help spread the COVID. Revved up by Sturgis rally, COVID-19 infections moved fast and far. Four states have reported a total of 81 cases among people who attended the rally. The hundreds of thousands of bikers who attended Sturgis may have departed Western South Dakota, but health departments in, public, in multiple states are trying to measure how much and how quickly the pestilence spread in bars, tattoo shops, and gatherings before people traveled home to nearly every state in the country. From the city of Sturgis, which is uh, conducting mass testing for its roughly 7,000 residents to health departments in at least six states, health officials are trying to track outbreaks from the 10-day rally, which ended August 16th. They face the task of tracking an invisible virus that spread among bar hoppers and rally goers, then traveled over half of the counties in the United States. An analysis of anonymous cell phone data from Camber Systems, because they track you. They know exactly where you are, dude. A firm that aggregates cell phone activity for health researchers, for health, found that 61% of all of the countries, all the counties in the U.S. have been visited by someone who attended surges creating a travel hub that was comparable to a major U.S. city. 
Imagine trying to do contact tracing for the entire city of Washington, D.C., but you also know that you don't have any distancing or the distancing is very, very limited. Masking is limited. It all adds up to a very dangerous situation for people all over the place. Contact tracing becomes dramatically difficult. First of all, if I'm at Sturgis and I get a call from you and you're trying to track me after I left, and I know that you've gotten your data from some random effing place. I'm suing the shit out of you. These people need sued. They shouldn't be able to track your whereabouts like that unless you sign up for it. Health departments in four states, including South Dakota, Minnesota, Nebraska, and Wyoming, have reported a total of 81 cases among people who attend the rally. That's just to begin with. It's still, still going on from there. South Dakota Governor Kristi Noem has defied calls to cancel large gathering and opposes requirements to wear masks. She welcomed the event, which in previous years bought, brought $800 million in tourist dollars. That's why she welcomed the event. Um, in a country where each state has been tasked with doing the heavy lifting of responding to a pandemic, tracing every infection from the rally is virtually impossible. But the city of Sturgis is doing what it can to head off a local outbreak by holding mass testing for asymptomatic people. Well, I can tell you that they had set up this mass testing before Sturgis even happened because they knew they would need it. So they're offering free testing, I guess, to uh, the residents there is what I read before the event even started. Um, in any event, I, there's a lot more to this. I could read for another hour, but I will link it. A bizarre mystery yeah. signal from space um, that is pretty consistent, I've talked about in past videos, has been detected again by astronomers. The so-called fast radio burst repeats every 157 days with the power of millions of suns and its latest barrage arrived right on time last week known as FRB 121102. Scientists hope that studying the strange blinking signal could unlock the secret to what FRBs are and where they come from. Fast radio bursts are intense pulses of radio waves that, no, that last no longer than the blink of an eye and come from beyond our Milky Way galaxy. Their origins are unknown. Some think that the energetic waves are a result of cosmic explosions, but that can't be because how is this so consistently happening every 157 days? That makes absolutely no sense, dude. So we're just no, dude. Oh no, while others reckon they're signals sent by aliens. I'm going with that or something. Maybe they're ricochet signals from our own stuff. More than 100 FRBs have been discovered to date, but only a handful have repeated and fewer still in a predictable pattern. Recurring bursts give scientists rare chances to study the origins of FRBs. FRB 121102 is only one of two of FRBs known to regularly repeat its cycle and was described for the first time by British scientists earlier this year. Astronomers traced its origins to a star-forming region in a dwarf galaxy 3 billion light-years away. During its cycle, bursts of milliseconds-long signals are emitted for 90 days before a quitting period lasting 67 for a total loop length of 157 days. Now a new study into the FRB has shed new light on its cycle and possible origins. A team at the National Astronomy Observatory in China detected 12 bursts from FRB 121102 on August 12th. They scanned the waves using the 500 meter or 1640 foot aperture spherical radio telescope or also known as FAST, F-A-S-T, the world's largest telescope in southwestern China. It's freaking huge, dude. There's a picture of it on this page. The group's findings suggest the burst is currently in its active phase and repeats every 156 days, not 157. According to their paper, FRB 121102's active phase is due to end between the 31st of August and September 9th, 2020. 
If telescopes continue to pick up bursts beyond these dates, then either it's a predictable pattern, either its predictable pattern does not exist or has somehow evolved. Scientists urge that other teams continue taking readings from the FRB in hopes of better understanding it. Based on new readings as well as older ones, the leading theory is that the bursts are emitted by a type of neuron star, star called a magnetar. The source of FRBs are still a mystery and the nature of the objects emitting them is unknown. So if uh, a theory, one theory is they're emitted by a type of neuron star, why is it a pattern? Is it a man-made star? I'm sorry, alien-made star? Anything with a freaking pattern is is like smart to me. So if you've got a pattern, you want something or you're trying to tell somebody something or you wouldn't just be out there, oh, I'm floating around in space. I'm just going to do this 157 days and then stop for 64 or whatever the hell it is. <laughs> no one's got that to do, dude, even aliens. I'm going to link it at bizarrebiz.com. Thanks for joining me tonight. Um, I will see you tomorrow. Everybody stay bizarre. Look, it, it's hump day eve, y'all. We can do this. We got this. We're getting closer to Friday. Hang in there. Yeah. Hey. Make sure you take a deep breath. Think positive. Just saying. Dude. Penguins give it free reign to roam around the aquarium since there's no visitors allowed. That's awesome! Dude, look! He's looking around! He's loving it! I got a new section under the on the headlines page at the bottom called Bad Seeds. Matt Geats of Florida, 1st Congressional District, mocked the whole process by wearing a gas mask when reviewing the funding. You're a super freaking winner, dude. An Alaska airman has been punished for peeing in the office coffee maker. Dude, why? Like, how did... Why? Did you take it in the bathroom with you? Did you stand in the kitchen and whip it out? Clearly, this airman is dedicated to getting kicked the F out. He's trying really hard, y'all.